So we're in the middle of lockdown here right now, as you can tell by this crazy thing right here. And I want to do a quick video anyway, because there's been really good news in the Shopify, Shopify sphere or world or whatever you want to call it. So up until recently, there's kind of two main SEO issues I found with Shopify. They can't really be customized. One is you can't customize or edit the robots.txt file, which is this video. The other, which is still an issue, is that you can't access crawl logs to see how robots and search engines are crawling your website. That's a different story, it's another problem, but finally, we're able to modify your robots.txt. Now, until this time, the problem you'd have is you could set a page to no index, and no index basically means search engines will crawl this page, and then you tell them, hey, please don't add this, please don't index this within your search engine, but the problem is they are still visiting the page. And when you look at crawl budget, which is basically the amount of resources a search engine will allocate to crawl your website, there is usually a maximum that they're gonna give to your website simply based on the size and authority of your website. Meaning that let's say you have a 5,000 page website, but Google only really think you're good enough it's a bad term. You only think you're enough of an authority to crawl, say, 2,000 of those pages because the other ones seem low quality or whatever else. Well, what can happen is they're only actually going to crawl 2,000 of your pages, meaning that regularly, give or take, again, this is a very basic example, but like 3,000 are completely left out and not crawled, not updated whatsoever. This can cause massive issues where you're trying to rank a page and it's just not being updated or not being crawled whatsoever. Ever. So one solution for that is to kind of tell surgeons, hey, don't index this page, but they're still gonna crawl the page. You just have to crawl all those pages. So what you can actually do instead of that is to put a rule inside of robots.txt to say, hey, don't crawl these pages or these directories. Rather than saying don't index it after you've already crawled it, you can actually save the crawl budget by just blocking, say, 3,000 junk pages from being crawled altogether. So then you control which 3,000 pages they are crawling. 2,000, I forgot the example now. But the point is, if you have low quality content on your site, you can control that they're not crawled to better utilize that crawl budget. That is one of the main elements of technical SEO. So what's really awesome now is there's a whole bunch of typical sort of issues that come up with Shopify, like collections such all, collections such types, collections such vendors, and various different types of pages, like tag pages and that. They really just waste crawl budget and don't need to be indexed whatsoever. So nowadays we can go ahead and just block them at a robots.txt level. So let me show you how we can go ahead and do just that. Firstly, of course, you need to go into your Shopify admin area and you want to go into your theme section and you want to go ahead and edit this theme. So you want to edit the theme code. When you're in the theme code editor, you're going to see a list of all the templates and everything like that. You want to go ahead and click add new template. From here, it's actually really, really easy. It's going to say a list of different types of templates you want to create. Select the one that says robots.txt. It's that simple, and then click create or add or whatever the text is, I don't actually know the button, right? And at that point, it's going to create a custom robots.txt template file, which you can go ahead and customize and add new rules to, but by default, it's already created to match the default rules that Shopify create, which out of the box is actually pretty good. I gotta give them some credit for that. But at this point, now we can customize this, and there's a few default problems that I believe Shopify has that it may or may not happen depending on the setup of your store, but this is usually what I would do for most of my clients. FYI, if you don't know already, head over to logics.com and you can spell this on here because it's a really weird spelling and we can do your SEO for you, whether it's a video review of your Shopify store, e-commerce store, or a full-on audit or a full-on monthly campaign if you need any help with doing this stuff for you. But on with the tutorial, here's a few basic that I usually recommend blocking on a robot so it takes the level and I'll include example code below of how exactly to do that. So the first one is slash collections slash all. If you ever looked at any Shopify store, you're probably going to see this as a default collection that's created automatically and what it contains is a list of every single product. The problem with this is that, well, it just doesn't really need to exist. The products are going to be indexable anyway via the category pages. You don't really need one category containing all products. And what usually happens as a result of this is you have this page, it's, it's basically the title is like products and your, your, your site name, and then it's paginated across, let's say you have 500 products, well suddenly 
if there's 30 products a page, it's, well, a lot of pages, right? So you can have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 different pages that are all just products, page one, products, page two, products, page three, and so on. It just adds up and adds up, and it's really just tons of pages that are just very, very low quality. So usually I would set these to no index, Better now, I can just block it at robots.txt level in this file. And again, the code that will show somewhere here or below will show you how to do that. And never what I do is slash collections slash vendors question mark Q equals and basically just Q equals as the thing we're gonna block. And basically this is a parameter URL and it's a default collection for vendors and another one for types. And it's basically a list of when you create a product, you type in the vendor name it automatically creates a new collection page for every single one of them. The problem with this is by default, you cannot customize this, you cannot add descriptions, you can't change that page whatsoever. So it kind of sucks, right? Usually what you do, you're gonna manually create a new collection for that. So that's just better. So again, it can lead to duplicate content. At that point, we have two collections basically targeting the same keyword. So what I again do is normally I'd no index them. Now I would go ahead and block them out of robots.txt level. Same for types, which is a list of when you select the type of product when you're creating your products. Again, it automatically creates a new page for that and it simply doesn't need to be there. It doesn't add any value and cannot be customized again out of the box anyway. So again, usually I would block them at a robots.txt level. Not to mention that both of these have really, really ugly URLs. If you're looking at it, it's like yourwebsite.com slash collections slash vendors question mark Q equals vendor name. And if you have a space in that vendor name, then it literally has a space in the URL. So it's like first percent 20 second, right? So it, it just looks ugly, essentially. The other two types I may block at a robots.txt level, dependent on the site, is product tags. When you create products, you can assign tags to them. These are usually accessible under, say, slash, slash collections, slash the name of that collection, slash the name of the tag. So it'd be slash collections, slash sofas, slash lever, something like that, right? In many cases, people would name these kind of ugly, sort of name it like filter underscore lever, and it looks really bad. And frankly, again, you have the same issue that out of the box, you cannot customize these, you cannot add any content to them. So it just leads to a whole bunch of low quality pages, essentially. So again, normally I would set them to no index. Nowadays, I can also block them at a robots.txt level, depending on the site setup. But usually I will go ahead and do that, especially for these ones. The other ones where it really depends a lot more is blog tags and this is usually found by slash tags so it's gonna be slash blogs slash say news whatever the name of that blog is slash tagged slash whatever the name of the tag is right so a little bit weird but that's just another URL structure that Shopify commonly use if you create tags on your blog posts now again these really don't add any value in most cases unless again you're doing a lot of customization here so I usually go ahead and no index them or again optionally now we can go ahead and block them at a robots.txt level to get them basically not crawled whatsoever. That's really the five main things they're gonna block and it really depends. You can do additional things depending on the site but this is all default Shopify things that we can pretty much do immediately just by looking at the site quickly just figuring out how the site works but most Shopify stores have all these issues but just double check it because some stores we've, we've looked at and work with do some stuff like maybe they use product tags and they actually customize the theme to make them functional it really depends on the site so double check it but that's a few different things that we can block at a robots.txt level just to improve the overall or better utilize the core budget improve the overall technical SEO. Now, what if you're an existing site setup and each of these pages are already indexable and already indexed inside of Google? What I recommend is before you go ahead and block them, try and set them to no index first. There's no index follow, so the links are still following those pages, but no index follow. Leave it for like a week or two, and then later on, go ahead and block it at robots.txt level. Again, it's not really necessary, but I just try and get them removed from Google's index first, but it doesn't particularly matter if you wanna just go ahead and do this immediately. And if you wanna do this again, literally follow the tutorials went through and just copy and paste the code below and I'll just give you the code where I've already blocked all these rules or create all these rules to block all those um, different pages, directories, stuff like that. It's really, really simple. But that is basically how you block access to them one thing you may find though, and I'll find a screenshot to explain how this works, is sometimes you'll see the results still index, but it'll say this um, is blocked by something or other. Basically the meta description won't show to say this is blocked, something like that, we can't crawl this page, it's some error like that. It's not really a big deal, you're not wasting crawl budget, but for whatever reason, Google think the page should be indexed, they know it exists, but obviously they can't crawl it, so they can't pull up any information, but they can pull up the links that link to that page, so they know it exists, 
they just don't have any access of information on the page because you can't access it. If you ever see the error, that's basically what it means. It's not a big deal, but it just happens sometimes. Anyway, that wraps this video up. I could talk all day. This is really fun and nerdy stuff for me. But basically, that is what is robots.txt, how to customize it on Shopify, and how exactly you should actually be utilizing this from an SEO perspective. If this is helpful to you, please do me a favor. Give the like button a little tap, just a little tap below. It really helps out with the YouTube algorithm, apparently anyway. And that's really all I have for you. If you'd like more Shopify videos, please check out the other videos on this channel. Leave a comment, let me know what we're gonna cover. And that is it. So I hope this is helpful and I will see you in the next video.